Hello YouTube friends! My name is Constance and this is Cruelty Free Musings. Welcome back to my channel and to an empties video! Look my box is super full. That's the only reason that I decided to do an empties video. You know I was doing them every month there for like five minutes and then I was like I only have the time to post four videos a month. If I do a pan update and an empties video, that's two. That is 50% of my content every month determined for me. And I can't cope. I cannot cope with that. It's too structured for me. So, I let it pile up. I don't think I've done an empties video since like February, maybe March. And here we are in July. So let's get into it. Let's talk about some stuff that I used up. Hair stuff. This is the Hask uh, Biotin Boost Long Lasting Oil Absorption Thickening Dry Shampoo. It's a nice dry shampoo. I pretty much just buy Hask Dry Shampoo whenever it's on sale. If it's on sale and I have one or fewer backups of dry shampoo, then I buy one of whatever I'm feeling at the moment. That one's nice. I've liked all of the ones that I have tried, and that one's cruelty-free and reliable, so there we are. It's and it's drugstore price, so when it's on sale, it's like two for ten or something. So that's also nice. This is not empty. I you might be able to hear that that sloshing around. This is my Kenra Volume Spray Super Hold Finishing Spray. I got this like three years ago. And it is in my empties because the sprayer clogged up and it kept clogging up because I use hairspray like once a week to once every three weeks. I just don't do my hair that frequently. So, um, yeah, the, once the sprayer clogged up, I rinsed it under warm water to get it, to get it spraying again. And then eventually I was like, I can't do this every time. Sometimes that I'm doing my hair, I'm short on time because I also do my makeup and I'm doing my hair because I want to look nice, which means I have to be somewhere. So I don't necessarily have the time to unclog my nozzle every time I need to spray hairspray on. So this went into my empties once the nozzle became too big of a pain. Is that it for hairspray? For hairspray. I think that that is it for hair things. Yes. All right. Let's do basic utility stuff. This is my toothpaste. Or it was my toothpaste. The last time that I emptied a tube of toothpaste. It's Schmidt's Wonder Mint Tooth and Mouth Paste. It's fine. I prefer the Hello Activated Charcoal specifically. Hello, Hello Toothpaste in general, the Activated Charcoal specifically, this is fine. Um, but because while I had that, I got hi. While I was going through the tube of Schmidt's non-activated charcoal toothpaste. I got myself a little tub of activated charcoal powder so that I could occasionally scrub my teeth down with with activated charcoal even though it wasn't in my toothpaste and I wasn't brushing my teeth one to two times a day with the activated charcoal. So I mean I guess it's I guess I would say that I would not repurchase that and in fact did not repurchase it 
I'm pretty sure that I have a Hello Toothpaste, although it's not activated charcoal because I have the little tub of activated charcoal that I'm going through super slowly because I, uh, I don't do that that frequently. It adds an entire minute to brushing my teeth, you guys. I mean, really. Who can do that every day? Anyway, um, Schmidt's toothpaste, it's fine. I prefer the Hello, though. Okay, other utility thing, this is Schmidt's uh, Lavender Sage Natural Deodorant. I really enjoy the Schmidt's Natural Deodorant. Lavender and Sage was not my favorite scent. I would say that my favorite scent is the bergamot and lime. This took active concentration and effort to use up. I did not want to use this up. Um, but it works. The Schmidt's deodorants all work and they do. Haha! -ha. Certain dry. Prescription strength, number one doctor recommended antiperspirant roll on. This is the thing that uh, made it easy for me not to use up the Schmidt's deodorant that was the scent that I didn't like. This is a really good antiperspirant. Like, if you want to not sweat, put this on before you go to bed and you won't sweat the next day. You can still combine it with a scented deodorant in the morning after you shower or whatever you know, when you get dressed, if you want to smell like deodorant, uh, this is not scented. But um, I highly recommend the Certain Dry. I own... I have one open that is on the verge of running out, and I have another one on backup. Even though I still have a deodorant that is scented, that I use for in the mornings when I want to freshen up. Okay, let us now do skincare. All right, this is the Pacifica, you can't see that, white, white text on a clear bottle. You cannot see that at all. Anyway, this is the C&C Love Serum. It's one ounce. I went through it one dropper full at a time. It took me about a month and a half. It's a nice little hydrating serum. I don't know that it was a concentrated enough dose of C, of vitamin C, to actually fade anything, but it might have faded my freckles a little bit. I have mentioned before that I don't love vitamin C because I am actually attached to my freckles and I don't want to fade them. Um, so it might have done the vitamin C thing where it faded my freckles a little bit. It could have just been that I have been wearing sunscreen super consistently for like a year at this point. Has it been an entire year? Maybe. So I'm just not getting enough UV rays on my face to re-up my, my freckles. That's also possible. Anyway, this was a nice little serum. Just didn't feel the need to repurchase it when I ran out though. Okay, we're just going through, pulling at random. This is the Anthony Glycolic Face Wash. It's Anthony, a brand, a, you know, a Sephora level brand for guys. I bought this for Husbear, um, and I used a lot of it. It's a really nice cleanser. I The first two ingredients are water and glycerin. It made me realize that I love a glycerin-based cleanser, so that's something that I actively look for now. I wouldn't repurchase this one specifically. I have the 
uh, pixie glow tonic for my glycolic acid and I have um, the bliss melt away jelly cleanser for my second step in my double cleanse however this is a nice cleanser especially if you're looking for something that's gentle but still has a good dose of chemical exfoliation my sunscreen this is the Aaron's faces peptide SPF 30 sunscreen yeah it's on subscription I rebuy it every three months what yeah okay really really like that sunscreen there's I have another sunscreen right now because it was out of stock right when I right when it was set to refill so it took an extra two weeks for my sunscreen to ship wasn't a problem could have not bought another sunscreen but I did so I will say that that sunscreen is not nearly as nice underneath makeup underneath foundation especially it makes it very streaky I like it when I can apply my foundation with a brush or a sponge over that sunscreen the Aaron's faces I can over the other sunscreen that I have right now I have to use a sponge it turns out streaky so little random factoid this is the Tatcha pure one-step camellia cleansing oil I bought this once in trial size and twice in the full size I didn't repurchase it when I ran out of it this last time instead I replaced it with um, jojoba oil uh, that works I would say not quite as well this one basically rinses clean it is basically a one-step oil cleanser versus being a definite two-step process where you have to use the jojoba oil emulsify it and then wash it off with another cleanser or or scrub it off with a washcloth um, where this is much closer to one step however I stopped repurchasing it because it stopped being able to take off all of my mascara which I do not enjoy having to you know scrub and pull at my eyes to get the mascara off so when this st started making me do that I was like nope it's also a lot of money to spend on a cleansing oil even if you only buy it every six months still a lot of money I think it's I think that that's 500 mils and I have something that's six ounces right now and cost me ten dollars But in any case, I have, I'm willing to do the extra step every single night that I should be doing anyway, probably, and double cleanse. You know, I'm just willing to do that rather than spend the extra money on the bougie cleansing oil. You know, my priorities have shifted. Is it a beautiful cleansing oil? Yes. Do I need it in my life? No. Do I need it enough to spend $50 on? No. So there we are. All right. Next up, we have Formula 10.0.6 Be Very Sassy Exfoliating Face Scrub. This is not a face scrub, Zomig. 
Z O M G no. No. Um it has cranberry and bamboo like actual bits. It's a physical exfoliator. My skin is too sensitive to be able to handle this. Um I did use it as a face exfoliator and then I realized that it was really manhandling my skin and I ended up using this as a I used it up as a leg exfoliator before I, I was um, before I would uh, shave my legs so um, it's it's not horrible ingredients either but there is you know there there are sulfates that are up higher than hydrating ingredients like glycerin glycerin is one of my favorite ingredients as someone with dryish normal skin so um i prefer sulfates to be lower on the ingredient list than glycerin and other hydrating ingredients so this just didn't tick enough boxes for me to repurchase. Um, okay. This is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Deep Dive Cleansing Gel. I bought this like a year and a half ago. Did I buy this like two years ago? I bought this like forever ago. Like before I was cruelty free forever ago. And it took me forever to use up because, again, normalish, dryish skin. This is too stripping for me. I ended up using it up as a makeup remover when I got in the bath. So if I wanted to get in the bath, um, splash water on my face, and then take off my makeup with a wet cleanser, this worked great for that. But um, then to do a second cleanse after that, I had to use, um, I actually paired these um, for quite a while. I used this up a long time ago, actually. I think this was one of the first MDs to go in this box. Um, so, um, once I had my makeup off, I would double cleanse, but with a gentler, more hydrating, glycerin higher in the ingredients type cleanser because this by itself is too harsh of a cleanser on just my skin. It would probably be really nice for oily skin. It's a little too harsh for me. Really enjoy it as a makeup remover. Do not enjoy it as a base cleanser. All right. Okay. This, the Pacifica Coconut Probiotic Technology Water Rehab Cream. This was my face moisturizer for a while. I bought uh, two tubes of it. It's a nice face moisturizer. The thing is, it's coconut and it's really strongly coconut. It's really strong. Really strong. So after two tubes of this, I was just coconutted out. So um, I got, a, I think, an Andalou Naturals face moisturizer instead. Um, and that one is you know it's for this one it's not even that there's a ton of fragrance in it um the perfume is all the way on the in the bottom it's the last ingredient it just it just smells too much Probably because it actually has coconut water in there in like the first 20 ingredients. So that combined with the fragrance at the bottom made it just way too coconut for me. 
that's my personal I can only do so much coconut so that's a that's a me thing that's not that is definitely not the moisturizer itself but um, I well goodbye I bought a different um, a different moisturizer and I think it's like pineapple based pineapple and aloe and it's really nice and um, not too overwhelming of a fragrance at all speaking of fragrance this is a little sample I bought a perfume sampler uh, I think in the November VIB sale um, from Alice Brooklyn and this is my favorite scent from Alice Brooklyn you can tell from the way that it's empty this is myth Alice Brooklyn myth I am completely planning to buy a um, a little perfume a, a travel spray size of myth once um, once I've used up some of my other perfume samples but love Alice Brooklyn myth it is a gorgeous scent all right random tool this is the eco tools uh, sponge nothing to see I it's very hard you have to really saturate it with water before it gets anything like soft and then once it is something resembling soft it is okay to um, to pounce on your face however I would not repurchase the eco tools sponge because I find that it is a little firmer than I really prefer all right nail stuff this was in my project pan this is the julep oxygen nail treatment I basically used it up you can see that there's a little bit at the bottom there uh, it went into my empties when it started becoming too gloopy and drying out too fast in the as I was applying it to my nails it dried out too fast so that it would ridge up and be stringy on my nails and you know once a base gets to that stage it's just not worth it but I do like the oxygen nail treatments uh, this is the Sesh Vite clear crystal clear base coat same kind of deal you can see it's not empty there's like a third of the bottle left actually um, this went into the empties when it started leaving strings off the end of my nails. I was like, nope, we are not doing this. Um, I'm, you know, it's a fine base coat. I didn't repurchase it because it wasn't super impressive. It didn't noticeably extend the wear of my nail polish the way like a really good top coat does. Or even kind of a basic top coat. I have um, the Ulta Beauty gel gel appearance top coat right now. It's nothing special, but it'll still make my nail polish last five days versus lasting three. So, you know, if there's not something similar uh, with my uh, you know base coat, I don't feel the need to necessarily repurchase it just because I bought it before. So we are we are trialing a new um, a new base coat. I need to drink some water. Now that my voice is back to normal, let's talk about the makeup that is in my empties. It's not all empty. News flash. Uh, this I gave up on in April. This is the Burt's Bees Goodness Glows 
foundation in 01005 porcelain. It's a good color match for me, especially in the winter. However, it is too streaky to apply with a, with a brush. It doesn't last worth a darn. Um, it doesn't play nice with other products. It, you know, there's, there's just nothing going for it. Like I have, I have other drugstore foundations even that I like more than this one. And it's, it's too high coverage for me to enjoy wearing as just a glowy foundation. I just... So, um, if I'm going to sheer something out with a sponge and wear it with a little bit of, of glow and woomph, um, I want it to be sort of a, a medium light coverage. I'm, I'm actually still on the hunt for a foundation that I like that is a glowy appearance but which is long wearing and which is um sort of a light to medium that it's it's really difficult to find a foundation in my shade that's a light to medium coverage drugstore or high end it's just really difficult to find that combination of things where it matches me and it's glowy or a ra you know it's a radiant or a natural finish and it's a light to medium coverage rather than being a super heavy duty coverage I don't I don't know what all of these people that need super intense cover everything on your face foundations are like here I am I kind of I mean I feel like the Kosas um tint and oil foundation is probably a little bit too glowy for me cuz like I develop some oils over the course of the day, right? I don't, I'm not going to apply a foundation and then just have it look the same for the entire day or maybe look drier at the end of the day. It is eventually going to develop some shine on its own. So I feel like I don't want an actual oil foundation. But apart from that, the Kosas foundation sounds great. Like, I kind of want a Glossier skin tint. Kind of. Now that they have an actual fair instead of just ending it light. Anyway, this was not that. It's an actual medium to high coverage. Probably not full coverage. I don't have a lot to cover, but... It's just too much coverage for me to want to wear as a glowy foundation. Uh, sticking with coverage products, this is another pan product. This is the Born This Way Naturally Radiant Concealer in Fairest. It's a really nice skin tone match for me. I feel like Too Faced has discontinued the Born This Way Naturally Radiant Concealers because they showed up on Holt Look not that long ago. But, you know, eventually I'll try the Born This Way, um, whatever, whatever super long name that ridiculously large half ounce concealer is. You know, eventually I'll try that one. I've heard good things about it. It'll probably work well on my skin. Um, but yeah, um, I like that. The fairest in particular is an eyeshade match. All right, this is a deluxe size Fenty Beauty Fly Liner. Um, 
the only Fenty Beauty product that I own. And it's empty. It is dried up. It's fine. Like, I am not really a winged eyeliner person because of the shape of my eyes. They're very deep set. They're semi-hooded. So, and they're also downturned. So, I have to work harder to get... I have to work harder on three different levels to get a wing that is actually large enough and dramatic enough to look like anything and then also to make it look good. So, you know, eventually I'll stop trying with the liquid liner. But, you know, I enjoy playing with it. I enjoy playing with makeup. It's just, um, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things where I'm like, maybe, maybe eventually I'll find a liquid liner that really works for me. I won't because my eyes aren't going to change but I mean I still have this this image in my head maybe this time maybe my current liquid liner will work for me it won't ever it won't ever start working all right moving on to mascara this is the it cosmetic superhero I opened this the first week of December and I finally threw it in my empties box the first week of April. That means this mascara lasted me four months. That's six dollars per month. That's impressive. In case you can't tell from the way that I'm acting. This is a really impressive mascara. I have not repurchased it because it's $24. This one I got for $10 because I bought it in the Black Friday Ulta mascara, ma you know, mascara sale. Blowout bonanza. Yes. Um, I spent $10 on this. It lasted me for four months. That is amazing definitely the next time it is on sale I will pick up as many as they'll let me probably two and that'll be like half a year but in the meantime I was uh, using up the other mascaras and I am also trying out some drugstore mascaras refreshing how do I feel about this this brave new world of drugstore mascara now that I am confining myself to having one mascara open at a time so I can't confuse myself. I really like the way that this superhero mascara looks from the moment that I open it until the moment that it starts smudging on me and that is the kiss of death for all mascaras for me. They all eventually start smudging on me. But this one has a really good shelf life. Very impressed with the superhero. Let's talk about a mascara that is not impressive. This is the uh, Buxom Lash Mascara in blackest black. It doesn't irritate my eyes, so that's good. Um, when I uh, started getting into makeup, my mom bought me um, the the Benefit Their Real mascara had just come out, so mom bought me one, and I wore it like twice and I was like this makes my eyes water like nobody's business and she was like I will take it off your hands I love that mascara she doesn't have sensitive eyes it's great it's more power to her um so this one I discovered you know I just randomly bought a mascara while I was in college I was like this is great it doesn't make my eyes water it also doesn't do anything for my lashes 
It is, I suspect, a lengthening mascara because it does nothing for volume until like week three of being open. Then it starts to do something with volume and then the next week it smudges. I know my lashes are difficult, but still, still, this mascara was also $10. Bought in the Ulta Black Friday Mascara Palooza. But I got significantly less value out of it than I did the It Cosmetics. Another solidly unimpressive mascara. This is the Tarte Man Eater. It is a volumizing mascara. I will give it that. It actually does something for the volume of my lashes. However, once again, it starts smudging in week four on the dot. If I want that, I can buy a Catrice mascara. Thank you. No. That might sound harsh, but I have actually tried Catrice mascaras and the thing that annoyed me about them is that they're like eight, nine dollars and they started, you know, the, the one that I had lasted fine for four weeks and then week five it started smudging on me. I was like, I don't want to spend eight dollars every month on mascara. I'm supposed to be able to wear these for at least two and a half, right? Like three months is the is the shelf life. Three to six months is the shelf life for mascara. What are these mascaras doing? Crapping out on, you know, in week four. Another pen product. Yes. This is the ColourPop Lippy Sticks in Lumiere. You can tell because there's no writing on the dot anymore. And, um, yeah, this is a nice mauve color. I enjoyed it. I used it up. Uh, wouldn't repurchase because it turns out that I am less of a mauve person and more of a rosy. Ah, excuse me. Less of a mauve person and more of a rosy nude person. Like the the gray toned mauves don't read well on my lips, it turns out. So uh yeah. I I enjoy a mauve occasionally. I don't feel the need to have more than one in my collection. I may not have any in my collection at the moment, but you know, it's it's nothing that I urgently need to fix. All right, you can tell that it's an empties video when my phone is like, we can't keep recording. We're going to have to split this recording into parts. You, it, don't worry, it'll pick up without a break basically without a break. There's like two seconds of blackness. All right. Uh, this is the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lipstick in November. This is, you know, this was in my project pan. I tried to convince myself to wear it. It's uh, not actually finished. Um, that's the swatch there, you can see it's very orange. Right, you can probably, you, you, can, you can get a sense that's really orange. It dries to a very dark orange terracotta. And it turns out that that's just not a color that I enjoy wearing. So this one went into my empties when I got tired of basically failing to make progress on it because I didn't want to use it. And then last item in the empties 
box. Woo! This is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Quad in Smoke. I was using the taupe for my brow powder. Then I discovered after a month solid of wearing it that it was a little too warm of a taupe for me to really be happy with. And then I started digging at it and then I was like, you know what, it's the July update. Just be done with it if you're tired of it. Just throw it away. It's not the end of, you know, it's it's no big deal. This. This cost you ten dollars because you got it on sale because no one else wanted it for good reason. So, summary. What I would repurchase of the things at my feet. The dry shampoo. The It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. The Too Faced Concealer. You know, which is probably going to be a transition to the other Born This Way concealer that they came out with recently. But regardless, what would I purchase again? Like three things out of this entire box. Oh, four, five. Yes, there are my staples the sunscreen and the deodorant. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to know the things that characterize what you would and what you would not repurchase. There are a few things in this box that I would happily repurchase and most of them are a solid, yeah. I liked it enough to use it up or in some cases didn't use it up because I got tired of using it, see 50% uh, of the makeup, or I didn't use it up fast enough and so the quality degraded, see the nail things. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed or learned something or both. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you feel like, and Goodbye for now.